All right. We're back again. There, I'll tell you later. I'm not going to waste the time now. <laughs> Technical failure. All right. We shall take up serpents. That's what I, I've read it so many times over the years, and I always thought it was like what we read in the book of Acts where Paul the Apostle picked up a bunch of sticks to throw it in the fire, and when he threw off the sticks in the fire, there was a viper hanging onto his hand, biting him, and he shook it off and to the fire and felt no harm. That's what I thought it was talking about. But it actually is future active indicative, meaning in the future we shall actively take up snakes. Now, mind you, I wouldn't be stupid enough just to go pick up some poisonous snake just because God said we could. You know, they're, like Paul's situation, he, took, he picked up a snake even though it wasn't his, his knowledge, you see. He picked up a snake. He took up a serpent in that sense. Let's not be stupid. Use common sense. And so what this thing going on with this virus, yes, we need to follow common sense. Wash your hands with antibacterial soap. Don't touch your eyes, nose, mouth, or ears unless you have. Cough in your arm. Cough in your arm <coughs> or into a, a Kleenex or tissue, something. Don't cough in your hand. Simple. Face. Oh, yeah, don't cough in people's faces. There you go. Okay, so trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not unto your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct your paths. Verse 7, be not wise in your own eyes. You see, that's what people do. They think, well, I know better. You know, I'm going to do it my way. What does it say? Fear the Lord and depart from evil. Because you'll find a lot of times our ways are evil to the Lord because we may wink at something and God says, mm, my child, you, you need to, you know, start listening to my still small voice instead of listening to your winky poo buddy that says it's okay. You know, that, that voice of self, that voice of the enemy, that voice that's contrary to God. And so that's what we need to do. Start using our brains. And listening to God, Spirit. Okay, let's go on. Second Timothy. Second Timothy, and we're going to go to the first chapter. Let your fingers do the walking. Second Timothy. Okay, familiar scripture. Second Timothy one verse six. Wherefore, I put you in remembrance that you stir up the gift of God which was put in you by the putting on of my hands. Paul was speaking to Timothy about the gifts of God that were given when he laid hands on him. Now, I know that, you know, this might be speaking of prophecy or, you know, a gift of healing or, you know, something of that nature, but the Lord said something, and it was very interesting. You see... <laughs> God gives, gives us faith. You see, there's a gift of faith, too. You see, we're to have faith in him. See, we have gifts. We have the giftings of trusting him, believing him. He's endued us with these things. We need to start trusting him. Now, why did Paul say this to Timothy? Well, if we read the next verse, he says, For God has not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and a sound mind. Timothy, at this point in his life, allowed fear to come on him. Why? Because in their <laughs> society, the, their news media, well, if you want to call it that, it was noised abroad how the Christians were being burned at the stake by Nero. Okay? And so many in the church started to rise up in fear. Oh, I'm going to die. I'm going to be burnt to a crisp. And so God was speaking through Paul to give Timothy a shake-up. God has not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. You see, the word gift here is the word charisma or charismatica. Okay? Charismatica. It means divine gratuity. It literally means the gift of deliverance or endowment. That's a powerful word, charisma. 
And so we've been given such gifting within us. And I don't like to, you know, settle on calling a gift this or a gift that or a gift whatever. So many people get fixated on the gifts, and you probably heard me say this, but I'll say it again. The Lord, I used to covet the gifts. Oh, I wish I could prophesy, you know, uh, uh, in my younger years, back in the 80s, before I became a minister. But over time, the Lord gave me a realization and a reality within my life. And he said, why covet gifts when you can have me? I'm the possessor of all gifts. So if we come closer to God, if we draw our hearts near to him, if we become intimate with him, close, we'll have whatever gifts needed for the occasion because he flows with all. And so we cannot allow the fear of something going on because of the news says so to make us afraid to go anywhere and, you know, shut down. The, you see, we need to start praying. We need to start praying that people's eyes will be opened, that the fear will be stripped off of people because they're trying to shut down this nation and this world because of the economy. This is serious stuff. God has not given us a spirit of fear. The word fear is talking about timidity. Fear and timidity. You know, if you're timid, it says the righteous are bold as a lion. You ever seen a lion that was timid? Hello. So we need to take hold of faith in God, trusting him for what he has promised. God has not given us the spirit of fear, but of power. That's that word dunamis again. He's given us the spirit of power. We need to rise up in his power, balanced by the love, which is the agape, and the sound mind which is disciplined, one that has self-control. This is what God is wanting for his children today. We need to take action, not in fear, but in faith. Not doing stupid things, but being smart, being wise, and being available for what God would have of us. I want us to go to 1 John. We've got just a couple more things to do, and then we're going to end. 1 John. 1 John chapter 4. I want to read just verses 1 to 4 real quick. Beloved, believe not every spirit, but try the spirits whether they be of God, but because there are many false prophets that are gone out into the world. By this you know the Spirit of God. Every spirit that confesses that Jesus Christ is come to the flesh is of God, and every spirit that confesses not that Jesus Christ is coming to the flesh is not of God. And this is that spirit of Antichrist which you have heard that should come, and even is already is in the world. Now we talked about this a little bit last week, but I want to emphasize the, last, the next verse. You are of God, little children, and have, what? Overcome them. Why? Because greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. It's time for God's people to rise up to their place in this time, in this hour. We're overcomers. We're not shrieking back in fear because of, oh, this virus. It's itty bitty thing. You can't even see it. You need a microscope to see it. It's that small, but people are so afraid. <laughs> now we're going to go to Psalms. One last scripture. Psalms 91. This is a, a psalm that people go to when they're, they're hurting, when they need encouragement, when they're suffering. Because it's a very, very comforting psalm. And we're going to close with this scripture. Psalm 91, verse 1. He who dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. Okay? 
Now, as we read this, you have to understand these things, don't just read them and think, oh, I just take for granted this is what's going to come my way. Because if you get that, you're in trouble. You're not looking at it right because it doesn't say that. It says, he who dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. So if you're not dwelling in his secret place, how can you expect him, his shadow to be over you? Oh, God left to forsake me. No, he didn't. Oh, God failed me. No, he didn't. If you're not under his shadow, it's your fault. And I'm not trying to put anyone down. I'm just trying to bring things back to perspective. We have to see what's really going on. Verse 2, I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge and my fortress, my God. In him I will trust. Wow, that's making a statement, isn't it? That's what we need to be doing. Surely he shall deliver you from the snare of the fowler and from the noisome pestilence. He shall cover you with his feathers and under his wings you shall trust. His truth shall be your shield and buckler. Is his shield your, is his, his, <laughs> is his truth your shield and buckler? Tell him like it is. Mean it. If you say it, mean it. It's got to be truth if you want it to work. Because it's truth. Verse 5. You shall not be afraid for the terror by night, or, nor the arrow that flies by day nor for the pestilence that walks in darkness, nor the destruction that wastes at noonday. A thousand shall fall at your side and ten thousand at your right hand, but it shall not come near you. Only with your eyes shall you behold and see the reward of the wicked, because you have made the Lord, who is my refuge, even the Most High, your habitation, there shall no evil befall you, neither shall any plague come near your dwelling. For he shall give his angels charge over you to keep you in all your ways, that they shall bear you up in their hands, and you shall, lest you dash your foot against the stone. You shall tread upon the lion and the adder, and the young lion and the serpent shall you trample under feet, because he has set his love upon me, therefore I will deliver him and I will set him on high, because he hath known my name. He shall call upon me, and I will answer, and I will dwell with him in trouble, and I will deliver him and honor him. With long life will I satisfy him and show him my salvation. Now, if you understand this psalm, there's points where David's speaking. David's speaking to us, to himself. And then there's other times that David's prophesying, thus says the Lord. Okay? Okay? I'm serious. This is, look at verse 14. Because he, hath, he talking about God is speaking about he or whoever, but whoever will set his love upon me, therefore I will deliver him and set him on high because he has known my name. He shall call upon me and I will answer him and I will be with him in trouble and will deliver him and honor him. So we have a responsibility. We can't stand in fear and say, God's going to protect me. Oh, I'm afraid. God, God's going to protect me. Oh, I'm afraid. God's going to protect me. Oh, I'm afraid. It don't work that way. Forget that stuff. <laughs> Forget it. Yes, it's there. Yes, it's real. Yes, it's been magnified. Because Satan says, I will be like the Most High. I will make my throne above the stars of heaven, and I will be like the Most High. And God says, I magnify my word above all my name. And so Satan, the master imitator, is magnifying this thing way out of proportion to cause fear and torment to tear people down. 
We need to recognize what's happening. And we need to take our place as the servants of the Most High God, as his children, as overcomers, as those that have put their trust in him. Now we're going to sing a song that we need to sing because God wants to release you tonight. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Do you praise the Lord tonight? Do you really praise him tonight? All right, let's praise him. Praise you the Lord, give thanks unto his name. Praise you the Lord our God, give thanks unto his name. Praise you the Lord, give thanks unto his name. Praise you the Lord our God, give thanks unto his name. For he's redeemed our lives. From the snare of the fowler, and he's delivered us from the noise and pestilence. The poor will be glad, and rejoice in him forever. For he is my refuge, he is my habitation. Praise ye the Lord, give thanks unto his name. Praise ye the Lord our God, give thanks unto his name. Praise ye the Lord, give thanks unto his name. Praise ye the Lord our God, give thanks unto his name. For he's redeemed our lives, who was near of the fowler, and he's delivered us from the mess and pestilence. The poor will be glad and rejoice in him forever. For he is my refuge, he is my habitation. Praise ye the Lord, give thanks unto his name. Praise ye the Lord our God, give thanks unto his name. Praise ye the Lord, give thanks. Before we close, we're going to do one more thing. Hushba. Uh-oh. Hallelujah. And I guess we're not going to do one more thing. Forgot to <laughs> I forgot to put it on there. There was a song, really powerful song, that we needed to sing. <laughs> I don't think I have it on here. Oh, look, I don't think I do. I really don't. Oh, Lord. Hushba Kanasikyo. I don't believe we do. Nope, it's not here. Okay. Let me just tell you. It's a song from Ireland. Worship from Ireland is, this is the air I breathe. And the Lord impressed upon us to sing it tonight because this is where our focus needs to be. <clears throat> now I'm going to try to do it a cappella, but 
please forgive me if I mess up because I'm only human. Hallelujah. This is the air I breathe. This is the air I breathe. Your holy presence living in me. This is my daily bread. This is my daily bread. Your very word spoken to me. And I'm, I'm desperate for you. And I'm, I'm lost without you. This is the air I breathe. This is the air I breathe. Your very presence living in me. This is my daily bread. This is my daily bread. Your very word spoken to me, and I, I'm desperate for you, and I, I'm lost without you. And I, I'm desperate for you. And I, I'm lost without you. I'm desperate for you. I'm desperate for you. This is the air I breathe. This is the air I breathe. Your holy presence living in me. This is my daily bread. This is my daily bread. Your whole, your very word spoken to me. I'm desperate for you. I'm desperate for you. I'm desperate for you. Ooh. I'm lost without you. I'm lost without you. I'm lost without you. Now, I know that might not be exactly how the track went, but the point is, this is where we're at. This is where we are today. His presence is more important than anything else. What he speaks to our lives is more important than what we eat or drink or wear or anything in our lives. These things need to take the priority because without them, we will very possibly end up like so many people, falling to the wayside, being succumbed and overtaken by fear, succumbing to and overtaken by fear. And we don't want to join that number. Bow your heart to the Lord right now. Father God, in the mighty name of Jesus, I just lift up everyone here, everyone that's participating and joining in throughout the world, God. 
that, Lord, that you would touch hearts and lives. That, Father, as your words have come forth tonight, Lord, that you would penetrate their hearts to bring life, to bring change, to correction, whatever is needed, Lord, to set them in a strong place, a higher place, that place that you desire them to be. And, Lord, we thank you and we praise you and give you all the glory for what you're going to do and what you've already done, Father. In Jesus' wonderful name, amen. God bless you and go with you. We'll see you next week. Be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Amen.